Hey everyone, Trevor Daly with Magmod. Hey, thank you for joining us for another How I Shot It. Today, I have Angie Nelson. Angie, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. I always love chatting with you. I always love seeing you at different places. And you're just, you're always, you're always showing up. I love it. So I, you know, you know, I get off the, get off my rock every once in a while out here out in the middle of the ocean. So, <laughs> so actually yeah. you just mentioned it. Where, where, tell everyone where you're at. Um, I am a wedding photographer out of Maui, Hawaii. Now I, you said Maui, so we got to ask, how are the photographers? How's everyone doing out there? Um, it's rough going right now. Uh, our, a lot of us, our inquiries have slowed, um, but we're all just trying to focus on the good things and um, pivoting and doing what we can in the interim. Yeah. You know, uh, you mentioned the pivoting part. I, I imagine photographers there have had to really do that quite a bit lately. You had the whole COVID thing where that shut down a lot of tourism, which, you know, that's a big part of weddings on Hawaii is that people going to Hawaii, destination weddings. And in fact, I think one of the things you do there is like elopements and stuff. You kind of, you know, do small weddings, big weddings, you do a little bit of everything. Um, so you had to pivot then and now you get the, the fires in Maui uh, and Lahaina that now you've had to pivot that a little bit. Um, Getting kind of really good at pivoting. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Be a good basketball player. Well, well, Angie, I, my heart goes out to you guys. It's got to be a struggle, but I appreciate you taking the time to just be on the show. I, the one thing, the one thing I, I love about you though, um, is how good you are at business and just sharing your business and sharing your techniques and coaching and helping other people. Um, Dave Moss, yeah, I know you guys have teamed up together on different things. Can you tell everyone a little bit about what you guys do? And then I know you guys have a website. I want to pull that up as well. Yeah, so Dave and I got together in 2020, 2021, kind of during the, the COVID stuff, and we created business as an adventure. So it's helping photographers level up their business game so you can get your time back, work less, make more money. Um, we're actually moving toward a, um, a community that is going to be launching this November with um, actually my flagship uh course, which is going to be uh, creating a visual legacy. So teaching photographers how to sell tangible heirlooms like albums and wall art to their existing clients. Last year, I made an extra $60,000 profit doing this method. And so I'm really excited to share with the photography community like how I do it and how they can do it too. Wow. That's, that's amazing that you're able to make that much money just off selling art selling basically you already did the job it's like this is essentially just extra income that you're you're creating which is and now it's off of only 27 weddings so i know that people shoot more than that um and you know you already have this client base you might as well be putting prints in their hands and making more money yeah. per client and you know right now for me this is pertinent because um the new client trickle has slowed. So I'm not as worried as a lot of other photographers who just do kind of a turn and burn method. Um, I'm making more money per client. So I feel um, confident about the year to come. Angie, I need to take this course. So you're going to see my name be added to your, your list of, uh, in fact, here, I'll show just so everyone can see you guys, if you scroll all the way, I hope my information doesn't pop up when I scroll down. <laughs> Uh, down at the very bottom, I saw it. Okay, good. It's not there. Um, I saw a little place here where I put my email and stuff. So I can't wait to be part of your, your little list and see what uh, what kind of course you guys have. Hey, there's Dave. Um, yeah, there love it. And then where's, where's the link to the group? Did I just see it? Uh, it's down at the bottom. It's just our Facebook group. If you search a business as an adventure, um, you, you can just join our Facebook group. Facebook group there. Oh, we'll make it, be making announcements there. And then of course our mailing list on the bottom too. Uh, we're going to be sending out all the information in the weeks to come about the November launch of the course. Excellent. Good deal. Hey, while I have my internet page up, I'm going to show everyone your website as well. So we got your website over here. Um, Angela Nelson, Maui wedding photographer, absolutely beautiful. Good, good stuff. And then, of course, your Instagram as well. So, guys, go give her a follow. Give her some support. And then, of course, um, if they wanted to, this is where I found that link to your business as an adventure was right here on this one. So, if you're looking for an easy way to get to her course, there, there's an easy way to do it. So, go check that out. Good stuff. All right. Well, 
I am excited to also show some of your photos. We have, um, I think it was three or four photos, I believe, that we're going to talk a little bit about. And what's cool is you're going to kind of show kind of the levels that, you know, these photos went into. We're going to see a little bit of behind the scenes and kind of like you started here and kind of went there. So um, that being said, are you ready to talk about these? I'm so ready. Let's do this. <laughs> I love you, Angie. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Tell us about this first one. Oh, my gosh. I love this photo for a, a myriad of different reasons, but I really love this photo because it is two photos put together and I didn't have to spend an extra four hours on top of the mountain to get the night sky, which is how long I would have had to have waited um, on this new moon night uh -huh. in order to um, capture the stars. So uh, what I did is I started with just the mag box. So the mag box um, yeah. is... You're located welcome. above them yeah so he, here here's the first image okay now this is straight out of camera the yeah. mag box is a camera left up at about seven feet pointed down there and this i brought this photo into uh, lightroom and just brought up the exposure so that way you could see the mag box but my intent was to kill the ambient light on this you can still see the mountain right there um but i just wanted them looking up at the stars. I told them exactly what I would be doing, which is um, I'm gonna let you guys go to dinner. I'm gonna go home and get in my warm jammies and have a glass of wine on my and I and take a photo of the night sky. <laughs> so that way you guys don't have to wait another four hours um, to get this star shot that they really, really wanted. So it's two photos put together. We use the mag box nice and close to get that beautiful light on them looking up. And this is the night sky on the night that they got married. I love that. So you actually, you, you, what 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 I love about this shot is that you pre-visualized it enough that you knew that you want them looking up, and that you were going to capture that night sky later in the yeah. evening, and then actually composite it together. Um, I just I, I love that, and I love the fact that they're looking up too, because it kind of really draws attention to the whole the whole point of of showing this kind of universe that's you know around them, which is really cool. Well, and I'd like to say too, that I usually like to do star shots all in camera. That's my preferred method to do it, but I can only do that when couples have me until like 10, maybe 11 o'clock at night. Um, and then we're at a place that is dark enough to where you can see all of the stars. And really there's only a few venues on Maui that are positioned in a way in which that we can do that. Yeah. Um, so it's my preference to do it all in one shot, one go. But because of time restraints and, um, you know, guys, it's really cold up on top of that mountain. Oh, <laughs> and on the mountain, I'm talking about how like, cold it is up there. Um, but I just didn't want us to have to like wait up there for four hours. And they were on board with this too. They were hungry and ready to go have dinner. I love that. So just to go back and kind of recap, we have, um, so the, this is the same shot. It's just lighting it up so you can see that mag box. So this is the original kind of using their light that you composite mm -hmm. with star ones here we lighten it up just for photographers to be able to see the the mag box there and then mm -hmm. later that evening you grab the star shot you composite the two together and made that so beautiful. yes Thank you. love it love it love it love it i i love the fact that you also pointed out that you know you normally would like to do this but it was one of those situations where it's like okay i i want to create this shot for them but i don't have the time to do it right now but if i do it i can if i capture this pre-visualized. I know I'm going to do what I'm going to do with the shot and then I can just create it later. I love that. Yes. Yeah. And well, this is one of the photos that the couple said specifically that they wanted because they were getting married on a new moon. And um, I'm a big fan of asking my couples, what's your dream photo? What does it look like? And then making that photo for them. And so they had said star photo and I'm like, all right, well, we have a time constraint. So this is how we're going to do it. And as I said, they're on board. That, you know what I, I love about these shows and doing these interviews is I always pick up small little things from people. And I love that question right there. What's your dream photo? As opposed to saying like, you know, hey, send me a Pinterest board of your favorite photos or whatever. It's like, it's like what's your dream photo? Let's get that one, that one shot that you absolutely love. Um, well, and that's the photo that ends up on their wall. That's the photo that ends up in a full spread in their album. So when they say that, they give you very specific parameters of the photo that they want, yep. make that photo for them. I love that. That's really cool. All right, Angie, tell us about this next shot right here. All right. This is also a mag box photo. And I, I love that I got to use the mag box on this because typically um, it's windy in Maui and I can't always use the mag box I'm, because things blow over. Yeah. Uh, but I had an assistant here, uh, Brie from Photography by Brie. Um, she is holding the mag box for me. 
And um, I just had them do a little twirl and I was able to get uh, this sliver moon in the, um, in the shot along with the, the, that color gradient. It's so pretty. Is that color gradient? Is that like, that's not light pollution, right? What, what, oh no, that's just the sunset. That's the sunset. So this is, this is on top of the mountain. This is after the sun has set, but we get, the, it's, it's, you know, the blue hour. Yeah. It's civil twilight. Yeah, so yeah. We, get this, we get this really beautiful color gradient on top of the mountain when the sun is setting because the sun is below the clouds, right? Yeah. So yeah. you get that darkness that's fading into the sunset colors. That is beautiful. I love that. Um, and, and you said the mag box, I think, did I show it already? Oh, there it is. There we go. Yes. Well, and obviously I got rid of, um, the stay behind these, these <laughs> ropes. <laughs> uh, I got rid of that and, um, some, of uh, some of the power lines on, on the side of the mountain. And of course I took her out of the photo as well, but yeah, there, there it is. Yeah. That, that nice soft light. It's beautiful. And it looks like that's the mag box 24, right? The 24 inch. Yes. smaller portion. Yep. Cool. Did you use, um, was this just the diffusion panel or did you use any kind of grid or anything else? This is just the diffusion panel. Yep. I love it. So pretty. So pretty. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah. what about this one? I know this is a little bit more complicated here. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about this photo because uh, as, as a creative, as an artist, I'm always pushing myself to look at the world differently, especially when, you know, like I'm on a rock in the middle of the ocean, I shoot the same places all the time. I need to make things look different. So this couple loved my star shots, but guess what? They were not getting married on a new moon or like plus minus a few days of the new moon. So it's just, it wasn't going to be possible to get like them with the stars, mm -hmm. just the stars in like the one, in the one go in camera, like I like to do. So what I decided to do was highlight the moon and the stars and them. And these are actually three different images put together. Okay. So the very first thing I did was take a picture of the moon. So this was um, my 70 to 200 at 200. Uh, I think like the, F, like the aperture was like 13. I wanted to make sure I could get the detail in the moon, which I brought out later with brushes in Photoshop, um, or I'm sorry, in Lightroom. But I first started with the picture just of the moon. Okay. And then... I went ahead and did a photo of the stars. This is a really short exposure. Typically, if you want great star photos on like a new moon, you're talking about like a 20 to 30 second exposure. I think this was maybe less than even 15 seconds because we had that almost fully illuminated moon. Um, but I took a photo of the stars. And then the third photo I took was this couple cuddling under a tree. So um, there's two flashes here. The first one is at their hips with a grid on it. Uh, I didn't want any, I got a little bit of spill in here, but I, my intention was to have no spill. I just wanted to illuminate them from the back. And then I have a flash pointing straight up. Um, I believe that one had a sphere on it. I wanted to illuminate the tree. So right. the flashes were literally, they were five feet behind them. They were back to back. One of them pointing at their hips and then the other one pointing straight up. Okay. to a little bit tree. So they're, they're in the same spot though behind them you said about five feet yep yep okay. same spot behind them and i knew after i took this photo i mean it's, it, there's a lot of green there's a lot of green cast happening and it was just going to be a, a pain mm -hmm. and competing colors right you got the blue of the sky and you got like the green of this tree but then she has like a white dress i knew that i was going to go black and white with this so all i did in camera this is in camera i layered the three photos on top of each other and you'll see even some of the leading down into where the couple are at, right? Like this is on the ocean, like the ocean is right there. Um, but you know, usually the stars wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it coming down that far. But yeah, it's just th it's three photos layered on top of one of one another to make this kind of, I don't know, ethereal yeah. photo piece of art for them. And you know, it is the night sky on their wedding day. It is the moon on their wedding day. And of course it's them on their wedding day. So I don't, they haven't seen this one yet. I think they're going to love it. <laughs> I, I, I think they are going to love it. It's a beautiful <laughs> shot. You know, you know what I love about it um, is the fact that you, and, and this is the second photo that you've done this with, is that you're capturing the stars or the moon or everything on that day. Because it would be so easy for you to just go online and grab a star shot, right? Yeah. And pick whatever and pop what it in. What fun is that? Well, <laughs> 
I no, but I, I think I think there's there's a, a level of authenticity to the photograph when it is you know that's literally what the moon looked like on their wedding day. I at one time I just shot a wedding. It was on a day that the super moon was happening. It was like five years ago, and I remember the couple was like, "Trevor, you have to get this moon shot," and I did. But I had to shoot the moon separately from them and then bring mm-hmm. it in because the way where they were at and stuff like that, plus the lane, you know, the lens, and so forth. I made yes. it look like a super moon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I remember thinking to myself, gosh, it'd be so easy to grab anyone's moonshot, but I want to have that authenticity because they know what the moon looked like. They know where they were at. Like, you know, so yep. I think that's important. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, we got one more shot here on uh, and, and, and by the beach, and then we're going to get into a few kind of Halloween theme shots. Yes. So but before we do that, tell us about this one here. All right. So this couple got married uh, at one of my favorite wedding venues in Maui called the Oluwalu Plantation House. And they have this beautiful jetty that goes out into the ocean. And when I'm really lucky, we get some high surf that comes and splashes against the jetty and we get, we get these splashes. And I've shot at this wedding venue so many times and... You know, when I, when I take photos of them, and this is just after sunset, so we still have that the color in the sky. Yeah. Um, you know, I've taken photos of couples out there before, but on this night, I was like, you know, I really, obviously the couple is the, is the star of the show, but the waves kind of are too, and they're going to remember this about their wedding day. So let's see if I can illuminate both the couple and the waves, because if it's just the couple, we're going to have the, the light fall off. And it's not going to get anything on the waves or maybe just like a touch behind them for the light spill. Yeah. So this is actually two flashes. Um, we have one flash camera left up at about seven feet. It has a sphere on it. And that one is specifically for the couple. And you can see kind of the angle because of the shadow um, behind her arm. Yep. And then we have a flash a few feet behind them. You can actually see a little bit of the flash spill on the ground. Um, this is the only BTS I have, which is a video. Yeah. Um, but I took that flash. So that flash doesn't have a modifier on it because I wanted the light to be messy and just go everywhere yeah, yeah. because I didn't know where where exactly the, uh, the wave was gonna be splashing. So I shoved my flash inside of a plastic bag and I put it on the jetty. Uh-huh. And this was what happened here. <laughs> you, you know i I've that's, never... that's three it's three flashes sorry i also have them backlit look at that three flashes <laughs> no, no, that's good that's why we have yes right you know what mm-hmm. i i i don't think i've ever i mean maybe this is more popular out there granted here in arizona we don't get a whole lot of ocean uh experience um yeah. but i don't know if i've ever seen the, the light hitting those waves, the way you did that, I think it makes a huge difference. Because look at the waves over here to this side, right? Mm-hmm. And you know how kind of dark they are. And then over here where that light is hitting them, it's really making those come alive. I love yes. It. And I, I had this shot in my head because the last time I had photographed on that pier at high surf, I, I actually, this was taken in September. Mm-hmm. And then the last time it was high surf, I remember it was May. And I didn't have, we didn't, we didn't have the time to do it, but I remember thinking in May, I'm like, oh my gosh, this, the next level of this kind of photo would be if I illuminated that flash. So going into this wedding, knowing that we were going to have high surf, I knew this is what I wanted to do. I made sure I brought extra plastic bags and, um, you know, we're going to cross our fingers and, you know, we're like watching the ocean. We're like, okay, get ready for the kiss, get ready, (laughs) kiss and hold. So this is I mean, you can even see Mark is like smiling in this because I'm sure he had to hold it for a few seconds <laughs> for that splash to come up. That's awesome. Is it, does it splash enough to get them wet or are they kind of out of? It is. It has happened before. Yeah. And I always, I always clear it with the couple. Hey, like, are you cool to get a few sprinkles on you? Because I mean, obviously you can see that the jetty is wet. Yeah. Um, so the, the waves are coming up there. If, um, if they're not cool with it, we'll stay away from it. But my couple's, um, they're all about the photo. And so if they get a little bit of sprinkles on them, like they're good. Yeah, no, I, I think that's excellent. I love how you said my couple. I think it's because your couples are the same type of people. It, well, let's go back to this. It's the idea that you attract people that, you know, your energy and stuff is going to attract people that are just like a little bit crazy, a little bit fun, you know, anything for the shot, <laughs> anything for the shot. I love it. I love it. Excellent. Well, good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing that. 
Uh, Angie, this next shot, I'm actually going to pull this up because I think we're going to turn this into a, probably a little YouTube short or something. So I want you to describe how you did this shot. This is a kind of a Halloween theme uh, shoot that you did with your daughter and her friend. Yeah. Or, is that right? Yes. There was a lot of candy bribery in this. <laughs> That's the real secret sauce, Trevor. <laughs> candy bribery for kids. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell us about this one. Yeah. So this was taken in my backyard. Oh, my backyard looks very different nowadays, but... Um, I wanted, I wanted to do something that was spooky, but not like, you know, gory spooky mm -hmm. for my daughter and then her little best friend. So this is three flashes. We have one that is camera left. Okay. Um, it's actually, it's a mag box that's up at about seven feet. You can't see it from this shot right here but it's up camera left uh, to get that nice soft light on the side of my daughter's face. And then you'll see um, <laughs> on, my, on my little side table, there's a little smoke machine. There it is. Yep. Uh, this is just like a target smoke machine and they're not good smoke machines, you guys, but it does the job. Um, next to that by the tree, yep, there is a blue gel on a um, mag sphered flash. Love it. So to turn that smoke blue, and then there's like a sneaky hidden flash, right? Yeah, there she is. Um, I wanted to light that bush right there red. And I didn't want it, I didn't want this photo to be overtly red. I just wanted a little bit of red flash, like it's like really into Stranger Things, you know, the red and the blue and Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is this is what I got with this. I use a 50 millimeter on it for just a little bit of compression. Like 35 is typically my, kind of my go-to, but I wanted to make this more portraity. Um, she is holding candles in there. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That is a, that's a Photoshop trick on the candles because balancing all of the light, um, I wouldn't be able to pick up the glow of the candles with all of these different, uh, flashes happening. Unless I think put like a flash in there gotcha. <laughs> and I only have three flashes guys. I love it. So yeah, That's how that one was shot. And then for her friend, Keaton, uh -huh. he is, um, he's a little more of a spooky guy and it took less candy bribes to get him to stand still. <laughs> Um, this is the same setup, except for the fact, um, I had him move a little bit closer to that red bush. So we see some more red there. Mm -hmm. And then I turned off the mag box. I wanted, he had the hood up. I wanted it to be a little more spooky. You see the light from the blue coming and kind of illuminating the side of his face and his nose. And then you can see his eye. If you like really look, I wanted it. I wanted it to have more of a spooky. Actually, I think in this photo, he's going spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's how I sold it to them. Oh, these are spooky portraits and I will give you candy. Um, so yeah, two different, I mean, same setups, two different looks just based on, you know, having their face illuminated versus not. I love that. You know, Halloween is such a great time to experiment with light and just kind of be fun with it and get creative. Um, I, one time I set up a little, uh, a couple of Magmon modifiers and gels and stuff and I put it in my, my driveway and mm -hmm. that night when people were out trick-or-treating, particularly my friends, I wouldn't take pictures of like just random people, but when my friends and stuff would come by, I'd be like, Hey, let's get a, let's get a quick photo of you guys. And we'd do something fun yeah. with it, you know, but it's such a great time to experiment and just do fun things like this. So I love this. And, and, I mean, really the smoke machine, you guys, like if you want to make something spooky, get a smoke machine. I think that smoke machine was like $20. I mean, yeah. like it looks like a $20 smoke machine, but atmosphere aerosol is another great one that you can use to just put yeah. some particulates in the air and then illuminate and then, you know, immediately becomes spooky. Totally. Totally. No, that's a great point. The atmosphere aerosol. I love that stuff. I love it indoors. Outdoors, it tends to, you know, dissipate so fast because of the, the yes. wind and stuff. Same thing. Yeah. Um, these little machines, like you're saying, they're, they're cheap. The one thing tip that I give everyone is if you use one, make sure you clean it out good afterwards. Cause otherwise that little, that liquid that comes with it gets gooey and it clogs it all up and it's not fun. Oh, sounds like I got a surprise waiting for me when I get it out this year. <laughs> I think you do. Um, hey, this has been fun. I, I really appreciate you taking this time to, to share with us. Uh, and I, I, I hope things turn around quickly for you guys out there in Maui. And are you, uh, are you able to go shoot weddings on other islands and stuff as well? Yeah. Yeah. So actually right after um, the fire in Lahaina happened, I did two pivoted elopements over on Kauai. Okay. Um, and, you know, I love that island. And obviously I'm open to shooting on any island. Fingers crossed that um, 
I get some inquiries for Oahu or Big Island or Kauai or yeah. some somewhere else just just to supplement for the time being. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I and I, I hope people you know. You, I, I think that the, the really unfortunate part about stuff like what happened on Maui is that then immediately people just, that's what they think about. And they think, Oh, the whole Island burned or whatever. And it's like, no, 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 it was a very, it was a, it was a large fire obviously, but it was contained to an area of Maui. So please, if you guys are thinking about going to get married or know somebody wants to get married on, on Hawaii, definitely encourage that and send them Angie's way. Cause Angie's amazing. The best out there. I want to, if it's okay, I want to show really quickly one more time uh, for anyone that might be joining us a little bit late or missed the beginning of it. Um, I am going to bring up this site one more time because I love the fact that you are out there killing it, teaching other photographers how to do things. And truly, truly, and I say this in, in all honesty, I I need this. I need to like, <laughs> I, I need to take my clients and after their wedding, I need to be doing upselling. I yes. I feel stupid the amount of money that I left on the table without selling. And I really, I really should have. But well, and what's better advertising, especially if you have word of mouth referral, than if somebody's somebody gets married, they love their photos, get them printed in a photo album, their friends come over who are just newly engaged and they're looking through your photo album, like guys, this is this is easy marketing, really. Yeah. And totally passive marketing. Because you they have paid you to make this marketing piece of um, material for them to keep in their home and to share with their, you know, their parents and then eventually their children and eventually their grandchildren. So very meaningful. Um, yeah. If you're, if you're not selling albums and wall art to your clients afterward, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. I love it. And Dave, Dave's an incredible dude. I like that yes. guy as well. So guys go check it out. Businesses and adventure. Um, love it. Angie, I, and by the way, I hope people understand that this isn't like a show where it's like, Hey, Angie, let's bring you on and sponsor your, your <laughs> show. Like I, I truly, when I, when I point these things out, it's because I hope photographers who are out there needing that help, that they see it and they say, this might be the right answer for me. Go sign up for the email, join their Facebook group, go check some of this stuff out and look at their courses. And I think you might find something there that, uh, that that's going to help you out. I know, like I said, I need it. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, awesome. thank you so much for taking this time and, and being part of this show and um i hope nothing but the best for all of you guys out there in hawaii and and especially maui and so uh i i, I let's let's see how things go these next couple of years but i think i think you're gonna get a good turnaround and of course you're just killing it already so appreciate thank you. you thanks for having me i really appreciate it i love doing these i could talk about this all day <laughs> I, it would be fun to talk to you you're, you're fun to talk to so awesome well, guys, definitely go check her out. Go check Angie. It's Angela Nelson Photo uh, on Instagram. Angela Nelson Photo.com is her website. If you know anyone going to Hawaii, send them Angie's way. Uh, she's awesome. She'll take good care of them. And you can just tell by her energy that she has fun with her clients. So <laughs> you got the shit going on. I love it. Uh, you guys, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the Magma YouTube channel. Uh, we have these How I Shot It's. We're doing, uh, I don't know, three or four months, something like that. So bring in the best photographers in the world, such as Angie. On to describe and talk about their photographs and share with us their little tips and behind the scenes so that we can all learn and be inspired by them. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for joining. Angie, you're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.